Oh my God. You ever look into the mirror and like off no, like off no cocky shit, but like you ever look into the mirror and be like, damn, you look good. Oh damn, you cute as hell. Yes. Um, the reason I thought about that is because right before I pressed that record button, I was just thinking about like, like, I don't know, like, I don't need other people's confirmation. I don't need other people's, you know, input or, or what's that phrase? Um, two cents. I don't need for somebody to, somebody else to be like, hey, you're sexy. Or, hey, you cute. Or, hey, you got it going on. Well, bitch, I already know I got it going on. But thank you, though. I appreciate you. You don't look, you don't look half bad yourself. Right. But I, I, I wasn't always like that. You know? When I was younger, oh, man. I, I care so much about what people thought about me and the way I presented myself. Now, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. So, I mean, I, again, I'm not trying to be cocky, but I know I look good. I know I look good. You know, I hear it all the time. I do. Right? But I don't need for somebody to tell me that I look good because I already know I look good. Because God makes no mistakes. Can I get an amen on him? <laughs> I couldn't find part two. I mean, part one to this. Number 10, mental wealth. The first one on this list isn't anything too disturbing. The commercial was called Mental Wealth, and it was supposed to be a PlayStation 1 ad. It featured a teenage girl whose distorted face had an uncanny touch of sci-fi alien delivering a monologue totally irrelevant to the product in question. This randomness factor wasn't so common in TV advertising back then, so the ad stuck out like a sore thumb. The PlayStation marketing campaign at that time was seriously bizarre. Not a lot of them were really about PlayStation. They were just supposed to be strange and or uncomfortable, most likely an attempt to sit in the viewer's mind. tell you what bugs me at the human endeavor. I've never been the human in question. Have you? Mankind went to the moon. I don't even know where Grimsby is. Forget progress by proxy. Land on your own moon. It's no longer about what they can achieve out there in your behalf, but what we can experience up here in our own time. It's called mental wealth. Number 9, Little Baby's Ice Cream 2. If you've seen my first video on this topic, then you know of the Little Baby's Ice Cream commercial, featuring the cannibalistic humanoid made out of ice cream consuming himself. But maybe you didn't know that there's another one. Another one equally disturbing. I can't even look at that. Like, I mean, I've already looked at it, but I can't, I can't like, I can't, I can't. Look, I can't keep looking at it. Otherwise, I'm gonna get nightmares, right? And yo, with that first video, yo, with that, with who? That girl. I'm not even gonna lie with you. Like, I mean, no disrespect, right? And I, I'm gonna be very careful about what I say about her. But like, yo, I, I get, I'm, a, I'm a very, I get scared, e I get scared easily, right? So with that being said, I can't, he's in my peripherals, like I can't even, all right, like I'm talking to y'all, but I, I might have to face forward because he's creeping me out. He, him, he's creeping me out. So I, I can't, hold on. I, he's creeping me out, like hold on. So I'm talking to y'all, but I need to face this way. But yo, with that first girl, I understand, you know, that's the way she was made. 
But I'm not even gonna lie with you, like. If she randomly. I'm not even gonna say all that, because I'm gonna I'm sound very disrespectful. All I'm saying is, I get scared easily. I'm gonna just leave it at that. I'm, I'm not. I'm not even gonna say all that. I'm not, cause I'm. A, I'm a sound. I'm a sound. I'm a sound very disrespectful, and I don't. I don't. Mm -mm. But with this mother clucker, him. If he randomly popped up. Oh, oh, my heart is skipping a beat. Best believe that. That's so creepy, and that is so scary. Like. Instead of a single ice cream creature can... Don't you know how when you look at something or like when something frightens you or whatever like you can't see it. Like you just can't see it. No matter how many times people tell you you just can't see that. Like with this, like with this mother clucker, like I can't I can't look at him. Granted, I already I already know what he looks like, but I can't keep looking. Nah, I can't. I'm not end up having nightmares, so I can't. I can't keep looking at him. In himself, this commercial depicts an endless, hellish cycle of ice cream creatures sitting in cones, about to consume smaller, identical versions of themselves, while also about to be consumed by the bigger ones holding them. Welcome to ice cream hell. What the hell? We lick you very much. If you want to lick something, pause. Lick us. Pause. We love to lick. What the fuck? We lick to love. We are love lickers. This is this is as weird as uh Shrek is what is it? Shrek is love, Shrek is life. What the hell is that? Is that a tongue? Little baby's ice cream. Ice cream is a feeling. Don't ice Number cream. eight, baby laughs a lot. Oh, Lord. This vintage commercial was not at all intended to creep people out. Yeah, it is. In fact, it was intended to attract positive attention from little girls. This commercial There's nothing positive about this whole ad. That's a creepy ass doll. There's nothing positive about that. There's red flags all over the goddamn place. There's... That's a doll with a creepy-ass smile. So you tell me what... You tell me, like, what... What's so what's so what's so fun about this? What's so friendly? What's so positive about this whole ad? Because as far as shit, what I can see, I see nothing but red flags. I see nothing but negative vibes. I see nothing but pure evil. Evil. Not something any little kids ever need to see. From the deranged voiceover and horror movie style editing to the unintentionally disturbing headspins of the little girls, this commercial remains possibly one of the most unintentionally disturbing commercials to date. Listen to Remco's baby laugh a lot. She laughing about how many souls she's about to get. Number seven, the Orkin commercials. If you don't know, Orkin is a pest control company. Chances are you've seen at least one of their old commercials with the giant rodents and bugs invading people's privacy, generally acting like creepers trying to get into people's homes. Hello. We're here to deliver your new what? cows. Cows. What would y'all do? Has a matching ottoman. Mm. 
What would, what would y'all do? There's you... a comedic sense to these commercials as well, but it's also partially disturbing, especially in the sense that these rats and ants are six feet tall. Partially? How are you this morning? Very disturbing. I wonder if I could use your phone. My car broke down a few blocks over and... What would y'all do if you opened up your door or you saw one of them mother clockers just standing right there? What would you do? Comment below. Be like, Gator, if one of those mother clockers was at my door, I would blank. That oak. I, uh, I want to try and call my brother-in-law. And brother-in-law. You. We're not supposed to be back until Sunday. We could use the boy. Yeah. Number six, The Dark and the Lonely Water, released in 1978 and voted the fourth favorite PSA of all time in the UK. This 90 second clip features the sinister voice of Donald Pleasance as the personification of evil water. The video ends as the voice echoes the ominous warning, I'll be back. It was originally known by the much creepier title, The Spirit of the Dark and Lonely Water. The clip was meant to warn children about the dangers of careless behavior in the vicinity of water. After airing regularly for years on children's TV stations, the commercial quickly earned virtual cult status as one of the most chilling PSA videos ever. Unlike many PSAs, this one did have an impact, though not necessarily the one that the Central Office of Information intended. Many of the children who viewed the commercial not only became more careful when around water, they stopped swimming altogether, fearing death if they so much as dipped a toe in a puddle. I am the spirit of dark and lonely water, ready to trap the unwary, the show-off, and seems to warn me. But that pool is deep. The boy is showing off. Oh my god! Is slippery. Number five, the Japanese Calbee commercials. So most of us know Japanese commercials are weird. Well, a lot of Japanese things are weird. These commercials are no exception. It's hard to tell whether the people who thought of this were going for funny or disturbing. However, they created something that's a mix of both. This is an advertisement for a Japanese brand of chips called Kalbi. No, that's In weird. In fact, there's a whole series of these commercials. That's weird. That's really weird. That is so weird. Oh my god. If I ever see a four, if I ever see a dog jump like that, I'm hitting it right in the gut and I'm hauling it. One is your enemy. This one isn't really a commercial. It's more of a bumper. Adult Swim used to show this every so often at a certain time of the night, usually closer to dawn. It's been said that the point of this bumper was to scare any children out of pulling all-nighters, watching TV too late, or just watching Adult Swim in general. It may not seem too bad right now, but for someone who's laying in their bed in the middle of the night watching TV with the lights off, and then this thing pops up, it will at the very least give them chills. Rumors have it that once in a while, the sun in the background winks. Does it? I don't see it winking. You got me clocked up. You got it. You got Number it. Number three, every cigarette is doing you damage commercials. By now, the world knows the damage that cigarettes can do to the body, more specifically the lungs, but we rarely look deeper into what's actually going on inside the body as a result of smoking. There used to be a series of disturbing PSA commercials called Every Cigarette is Doing You Damage that did not hold back when it came to exposing the horrifying truths of the consequences of smoking regularly. Cigarette is doing you damage. This is part of an aorta, the main artery from the heart. 
Smoking makes arterials sticky and collect dangerous fatty deposits. Really? This much was found stuck to the aorta wall of a smoker. Oh my age God. 32. Every cigarette is doing you damage. Every cigarette is doing you damage. Smoking creates blood clots which can cause strokes. Some strokes kill, blind, or paralyze. Others you don't even know you're having. This is the result of a minor stroke in a smoker, aged 38. Every cigarette is doing you damage. Every cigarette is doing you damage. Every time you inhale, tobacco smoke condenses in your lungs to form tar. This is a healthy one. And this is the amount of tar a pack-a-day smoker breathes in every year. Damn! Every cigarette is doing you damage. <laughs> every cigarette is doing you damage. I mean, all right, we got, we get the point. Like sponges with millions of tiny air sacs for transferring oxygen. Every breath of tobacco smoke attacks them. No wonder smokers feel short of breath. Their lungs are rotten. Damn. Every cigarette is doing you damage. Number two, PS3 baby commercial. What? This was another bizarre and disturbing PlayStation commercial featuring a baby doll staring down a PS3 all while making creepy noises and motions. It has no relevance whatsoever to the console. In fact, it doesn't seem to have any relevance to anything or any meaning. This was yet another bizarre commercial by the PlayStation marketing team that shows exactly what they seem to be going for. Strange, random, and horrifying. Oh my god, why did I jump? <laughs> what the f- What? And number one, anti-meth commercial. This chilling ad for the meth project by director Darren Aronofsky, who by the way directed Black Swan, follows a girl from her hazy meth-induced state to the ugly realities of her meth-addicted life. We see the girl trying to commit suicide by slitting her wrists and submerging them in the sink. The ad demonstrates that meth can be so hard to quit that some may even resort to suicide just to end their addictions. The gory and startling 30-second ad is one of a four-part awareness campaign targeting at-risk teenagers. If I had asked, what does meth do to your brain? Does meth make you hear voices? Or if I asked, can't you just stop doing meth? My mom wouldn't be asking. Oh God, what did you do? Wow, that's a bit, wow. This actually aired? Come on, man. And that's it for this one. I'll probably never make another video on this topic, but simply for fun, leave any bizarre or disturbing commercials that I missed in the comments. Pinocchio had a... <laughs> I didn't understand that last bit. I didn't understand with the Pinocchio head. In 1995, pro-life lobby group the American Life League publicly accused Disney films of containing subliminal sexual imagery. As these films became available for home releases, these hidden sexual images could be analyzed in detail. The hidden secrets take a variety of forms. In Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah, I mean, I knew that. I knew that for years. <laughs> Yeah, I knew that for years. Disney was always doing throwing subliminals out there. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen any of these. Because none of them ring, ring, ring a bell. Thank God, because that's... 10 of the most disturbing TV commercial, commercials that has that ever aired. The fact that these aired lets me know 
that there are sick, twisted, no hearted people out there. Especially the second to the last, well, the last one. With the, with, the, with the chick that was addicted on meth. And her slitting her, sh like, why would you, come on, why would you air that? Who was the mother cluckers that thought that these ads would be great, awesome, good to to air, to to let people see, let the public see? Who thought about that? Who said yes? We should, we should, we should, we should, we should, we should, uh, we, should we should show. A girl on meth that slitted her wrist. We should show that. Yo, that's. Yeah, I'm convinced that I'm from, I'm convinced to the people that thought about these commercials. I'm convinced that the people that said yes that we should air it and make it public. I'm convinced that those people are sick and not right in the head, especially with the PlayStation one, with the with the doll baby, just looking at the shit. But not, but like he said, had no relevance, had no, had nothing, the doll, the baby doll had, had nothing to do with the PlayStation, had nothing to do with the commercial. Some of these were very creepy and disturbing. And with and and with that ice cream ad, I think the second video, the second commercial with the ice cream, I don't think I'm ever going to get that image out of my head. That's that that was really disturbing. And then what they said, like we lick things, we lick things all the time. We like licking things. They should have put a pause on that video. The real question is, who was the mother clockers that said yes and agreed that these commercials should be aired and in and, and public for the people to see? Because those are the people that need to be locked up. Those are the people that need to be checked out. Those are the people that are sick and probably still are. Keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you. Stay happy, my family.